eighth, uh, I became nominated uh, to be on the list uh, for new James Bond. I was on a film set with two more actors who played the James Bond. If you want to live uh, in the different environment, nicer, better, uh, transform yourself. Welcome to Thursday Conversations. Today I want to introduce you one of the favorites for the new James Bond, but also a face of the new fashion brand Royal Military, inspired by aviation, military aviation, free of squadron, equ equestrian, gala uniforms and history of fashion. Kamil Lemyshevsky is often called a renaissance man, producer, actor, model, circus performer and teacher, journalist, nurse surgeon, and much more. There is no time to wait, so let's brief our WO7. Ready? Good morning. Good morning, darling. How are you today? I'm very fine, and you? Perfectly well. I'm glad to see you once again. Me too, likewise. Would you like to have a water? Maybe later. Shaken, not stirred? Of course, always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on, W07. We've got a lot of things uh, to go through today. We will travel uh, around Warsaw, around the center, and in the meantime, we will talk about the premiere, which is everywhere right now and is uh, much talked of. So now we are during the time of the premiere of the new James Bond movie. You are one of the favorites on the list for the new James Bond. Uh, but it's not your first time when your uh, path is crossed uh, with uh, James Bond. Uh, because in the past, few years ago, you played uh, with uh, Daniel Craig in advertisement for Spectre movie. Exactly. I was one of the henchmen and I was chasing and fighting with uh, James Bond, with the agent of uh, Her Majesty. But uh, it was a great adventure uh, to uh, meet him and uh, to start uh, the new career uh, in uh, Hollywood pictures. So how you, um, what, if you wish to share with us some uh, uh, impressions from this meeting, uh, what you, was your first impression when you saw Daniel Craig and uh, his way of uh, work, his ethics, uh, his appearance? And the production was really big, it was like uh, 300 people in this production. We had uh, three weeks of shooting um, across the uh, sea and on the mainland and on the island as well. Uh, also, uh, I will play it um, as a stuntman as well, uh, one of the main characters in the advert. And uh, it was a great experience to work uh, with the uh, top listed uh, professionals in the Hollywood films. Uh, with also with uh, Daniel Craig, but uh, there was uh, David Garrick uh, who got the Taurus kind of Oscar uh, for uh, stunt shows in uh, Batman, Avengers and many more films. And uh, one of the stunt double of Dan Daniel Craig uh, was Andy Lister, uh, who uh, exactly is a Captain America. Uh, we don't know because we see the main characters, main actors uh, on the big pictures and uh, we presume uh, that they are doing uh, all the stunts and uh, dangerous um, uh, things in the films uh, but uh, their doubles and stunt guys are doing all of these uh, very very uh, dangerous uh, shows and uh, it was a big pleasure and honor to uh, work uh, with uh, those, uh, those people so what is so fascinating about James Bond, in your opinion, that time goes uh, so quickly and so many years passed since the first James Bond appeared in the cinemas and burned the imaginations of uh, millions of people around the world. And now still James Bond is an icon and an icon for uh, people from different countries, different cultures. What is so inspiring in uh, this movie that people love it so much? I think uh, that James Bond uh, is a person uh, who's got a lot of mysteries and he's without the boundaries. Uh, he can do whatever he wants and he has uh, access uh, to all uh, new tools uh, which is only for army and not for uh, uh, normal uh, simple people and he's got the most expensive cars, uh, uh, suits, uh, the most beautiful women as well uh, are next to him. Uh, so I think this is the iconic uh, dream of uh, each man and woman 
uh, women uh, because uh, I think a lot of women uh, would love to be next to the top guy, top man uh, who's uh, the or best. To, or to be a new James Bond. Um, maybe. Have you seen the newest James Bond already? Uh, exactly, I haven't got time for that. Uh, I've been on a film set um, and uh, I played in uh, one scene uh, as a stuntman over there uh, but also um, I was really surprised uh, that uh, I became nominated uh, to be on the list uh, for new James Bond uh, when I was a child it was my dream when I've seen Sean Connery on the screen and uh, I watched all James Bond uh, movies and uh, Sean Connery for me was the best I was the best uh, uh, James Bond ever uh, but uh, Daniel Craig is completely different um, agent a different character you know the times are changing and uh, we're going forward uh, so uh, he's a modern agent uh, different but still classic certainly your history may serve as a great inspiration especially for young uh, people uh, because you. you were never afraid to reach for the stars and uh, even though that not everyone believed that one day you will uh, play in Hollywood movies you were never discouraged everything is starting from a dream uh, but then is another step because people who are dreaming they stay to become the dreamers and they achieve nothing mm -hmm. uh, but if you have a dream and you will make a plan for 10 20 50 years or three months how to make the dream come true then you are a doer uh, so uh, if you transform a dreaming to doers uh, to make a thing uh, come true then you will realize your uh, dreams and uh, I remember when I was in a history lesson and it was so boring uh, but uh, I took a, a copy book and I wrote the plan for next 50 years what I want to uh, do and I put down uh, on the list all my top dreams and then I shortage to the 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 1 year, half year, what I can do and with whom I can do all of that. And it was a thing that I want to uh, play in a Hollywood films. I want to produce Hollywood films. I would love to live the life of the James Bond, maybe to be the James Bond or to play with the James Bond what I achieved already. And uh, I played not only with Daniel Craig, uh, if you will check uh, my IMDb, I, I, I can say I was in a film set with two more actors who played the James Bond. And when I was in uh, Cannes on the festival and seeing this beautiful uh, black and white poster uh, with uh, the collage of the James Bond actors, I was so impressed that I want to be there. I want to be on the list. And then. Uh, on a meeting with one of the uh, big uh, Hollywood film uh, producers uh, I get the information from the uh, journalist from the Times um, I was drinking a whiskey, not stirred mm -hmm. and uh, he told me, Camille, look at my phone Camille, look at my phone you're an odd checker you, I can bet on you 1 to 50 <laughs> that you will be a James Bond no man, you're joking it's a joker yeah? No, take a look. And seriously, I am till now on the list and people can go and bet on me uh, and mm -hmm. win some money or lose. It's like <laughs> in life. <laughs> so now I will ask you to blow your cover a little bit for our viewers uh, because I want you to reveal the list of the movies uh, in which you participated in uh, because in your portfolio we can see such a great huge productions like uh, Peaky Blinders, King Offer, um, Rocket Man, uh, Jason Bourne, uh, uh, Mission Impossible, Game of Thrones and much more. It's very very impressive but uh, still something which uh, not many people realize that you very often were the only one Paul in these productions on the all movie set. So how it was to work uh, on such a great 
huge productions. I'm very proud of that, that you mentioned about this, but not only one. I've seen also on the film set and not only the actors uh, from Poland, uh, but also the costumographers uh, with Steven Spielberg uh, uh, in one of the film uh, or uh, camera operators uh, in the Mission uh, Impossible and uh, but yes, I I achieved a lot and even I played with Rosamund Pike, uh, she got an Oscar and uh, I became uh, the Merlin uh, and I made, I forged uh, the Excalibur uh, so I can say that uh, I made the Excalibur uh, as the Merlin uh, for Guy Ritchie uh, I was dancing uh, for Ali uh, in the Aladdin uh, with uh, Will Smith and uh, <laughs> I've been uh, five or six different characters uh, in the Rogue One in the Star Wars uh, as the engineer uh, and uh, many more uh, and uh, I've been the uh, stuntman in uh, Han Solo, uh, the newest one uh, so my dream became true because I want, when I was a child and I watched the Star Wars I wanted to get into the Falcon I wanted to play the Han Solo or to be the Han Solo uh, or to play with him and I made it I've done it and uh, for me it doesn't matter uh, on which side I am uh, on the film set uh, this is my way uh, to be on the film set uh, to be the main actor uh, to uh, be the uh, PA to be assistant uh, also I was I, I became the producer uh, of the films uh, because of that like Sly, Sylvester Stallone says, and a few uh, top actors uh, from Maleficent, uh, for example. Uh, and soon we'll have premiere of uh, the newest production, uh, which you produced, so, uh, Last Man Down. Uh, Last Man Down, uh, it will be soon uh, on the screens. Uh, it was big achievement because we had almost no budget, uh, we lost the sponsors uh, and uh, of the situation all over the world, a uh, few main uh, people. The worst time ever to create such a production when you started to work on The Last Man Down. Exactly, but uh, but we've done it. Uh, we've done it with Stan Janewski, with Daniel Tyson, with Fansu, uh, with the actors from Wonder Woman, Batman, uh, Harry Potter and uh, people will say that it's impossible uh, but my life but mission impossible is a part of your life as well exactly <laughs> <laughs> so now i think that uh, um, this work being an actor have something in common with james bond that's something which people are so fascinated about that you can live so many lives during just one life this is the m amazing thing uh, to be an actor uh, that you can live thousands of lives uh, so uh, you're living the life of the people who will never appear uh, you're living the fantasy uh, you're making the fantasy also I've been the uh, king of the winter elves uh, another project uh, I became uh, the witcher in a short film of the witcher uh, before the Netflix uh, film and uh, yeah I love this uh, and you work, uh, you worked in Hollywood uh, movies on productions as a stuntman, which is also a fascinating chapter in your life. Could you tell us more about your work on Mission Impossible, for example? In the Mission Impossible, I was uh, an assistant of Tom Cruise, exactly. Uh, so uh, it was a huge Mission Impossible for me because in that times, uh, people will say that. Uh, People who are working on the film said they are very rich, they've got everything, but not really. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have nothing to eat and in that times uh, I haven't been paid uh, by my agents uh, for many weeks and I haven't got any money uh, even to buy the ticket uh, for a tube uh, to go to Warner Brothers Studios uh, to work over there and I haven't got uh, money for food uh, for the last one and a half week in that time so I had to steal the apples uh, from the tree next to the church and uh, next uh, to my uh, house and uh, to get on the first day of the film set I had to jump over the uh, gates of the tube uh, of the train and uh, to walk uh, five kilometers from the train station to the Warner Brothers studio to get a badge that I'm the part of the film crew and then 
I get finally uh, the uh, money to travel uh, softly uh, from the house to the film set. And we've been working from uh, 6 a.m. till uh, 10 p.m. And uh, it was kind of Mission Impossible to work on the Mission Impossible, but we've done the impossible possible. <laughs> That's something which we don't talk a, a lot about, but I think that it's great motivation and uh, uh, it can uh, inspire us also in that field to be persistent, to go for your dreams, for you, what you want. But what is your greatest inspiration and what motivates you to fight every day? Also in these times when you had to find uh, uh, an apples on the movie set. Um, it's uh, to live the life as the last day of your life. And um, when I almost uh, lost life twice and I've been defibrillated uh, after the show of the stunt show when I was uh, doing the fire briefing and uh, being a human torch, uh, I landed in a hospital and the doctor says that uh, there is no uh, chance uh, for me to live and I've got like three months. I just told them I'm uh, doing uh, pushing the wheelchair uh, exactly moving on on the wheelchair with the uh, tube uh, of oxygen with the oxygen mask that no guys I'm leaving this hospital in one month and I was on the for antibiotics and uh, in the meantime I got a phone call from Dubai that uh, uh, Cirque du Soleil wants me to play in the show and I even couldn't walk to the toilet and I just gave to myself that okay I've got two months uh, to go on a casting and meeting with the Cirque du Soleil to make my dream come true. And I have to leave the hospital and be, uh, be alive. Uh, and I've done it. They organized a huge group of the uh, circus uh, stunt guys uh, to go to the Dubai uh, to play the shows um, uh, for the um, rich people uh, over there and for the Cirque du Soleil. Uh, but my main quote is if you fall, stand up. If you fall seven times, stand up the eighth. I had a lot of injuries in my life uh, because from the young times uh, when I was a circus person, a circus actor and a stuntman, uh, I got injuries. And uh, in the Lithuania I had a fire show with my uh, team from Sweden. And then I, um, I hitchhiked to Greece, uh, to the Acropolis. But uh, I got a... Uh, very bad inflammation of my leg uh, when I find uh, in Thessaloniki and I get to the hospital and they wanted on a, a surgery theater cut off my leg I woke up uh, in the meantime when they were putting some injections into my body and I told them that uh, I'm a student of medicine and then the guys I know what to do give me antibiotics etc to cut off my leg and they, they saved it could you tell us more about your work as a circus performer but also teacher with pleasure. Uh, it was a big part of my life uh, to uh, kill people, not like a James Bond with the bullet, but mm -hmm. uh, to kill people with the love and love. And uh, so this this was my way uh, when I quit from the medicine and uh, just to give to the people injections of the positivity, uh, of uh, the smile and happiness. Even if you are dying, like, like Monty Python saying, if your body is rotten, just forgotten. Keep going and move on. I take your cross on your back and slide wherever you want. Uh, so uh, I organized the charity organization um, Eternity Award Fashion and Circus and uh, I was uh, collecting people, uh, kids uh, from the poor families, uh, orphanages etc. and uh, finding in them um, the artistic soul and inspiring it to grow up. And uh, to and I was giving them uh, work to do, and uh, uh, once, twice a week, when I had the time, uh, Ludzkie Bołudzkie, uh, it was a project. I was going to the uh, street parks, uh, city parks, and making um, workshops for kids uh, to teach them juggling, clown, aid, pantomime, stilt walking, and when I've seen that someone has uh, the spirit. I gave the offer uh, to the parents or to the uh, people who were taking care of them and they were coming to my uh, uh, art house uh, to train and then I was giving them uh, the job and they were traveling around the Poland and uh, around the world after all. Humanitarian and social uh, work is a great part of your life and every time we talk 
uh, there's something new which we want to do on that field um, even our last conversation and new uh, new endeavor which we want to take together to support place for the homeless people so this is also part of your personality that you do these things uh, and uh, still it's something which we need to positively infect other people with so uh, even though that you do so many things and your schedule is so busy, you still have a time for humanitarian, for social work. What is the greatest motivation for you on that field and what are your greatest dreams on that field as well? I think this is a sign that uh, it's an alarm uh, to help to the world. Uh, if you want to live uh, in the different environment, nicer, better, uh, transform yourself and uh, uh, this what is surrounding you. Uh, since uh, when I was a child uh, in a secondary school, I've seen the homeless people in the city of Łódź and I uh, knew that some of my colleagues, their parents, they had the bakeries. So I spoke with them and uh, I asked them, what are you doing with the bread? What you, mm -hmm. you're not selling in a bakery? Uh, we're just uh, binning it. So maybe can I come uh, on the Saturday or Sunday morning uh, when the bakery is closed and uh, take all of the bread what you have? Yeah, please come. So I took the huge bag of the bread and I was uh, moving around uh, by the um, city co um, communication by the trams and buses with this bread and finding homeless people on the train stations in the parks and giving them the, uh, to, to feed them. Uh, so it started like this, but I think nobody will understand uh, the fall of the homeless people. You don't know who is the homeless, who he has been. Maybe he was a very rich guy, maybe he's a king and he's checking uh, his uh, kingdom, how people will behave. Maybe he's a priest and he's checking uh, the uh, souls of the people from the community around, maybe. Uh, she uh, was a professor, but because of the political situation, somebody made her to fall. Like I met, uh, like I met uh, one of the uh, historian pro uh, professor uh, living as a homeless in Szczecin when I was uh, playing uh, Roy Ritchie, exactly. Kind of James Bond, uh, the Scottish uh, billionaire who's the owner of the uh, casino. And I spoke with her when I was running around the uh, uh, Szczecin uh, for a few hours. We spoke for a few hours. And it was so surprising that people with their huge minds are became the homeless. And uh, they don't deserve that. Now you are on the greatest campaigns around the world. Your face is on the products, your face is in advertisements, on the TV. But there was a time when uh, you were in the same situation so it teaches us so much that uh, life is unpredictable and we take some things for granted but we can never be sure if tomorrow will not be the role will not change or it will be not the one who is asking for help we never know that exactly so uh, it's very important to help to the people and to give the hand uh, to them if you have time um, even if you have one penny it's important to um, pay it forward I remember when I was uh, I think it was on the Orkney Islands, on the top of the Scotland, and uh, it was my dream when I was uh, during the medical university practice in uh, Edinburgh uh, that to go to Orkney. But uh, I was working in a, a few different places, sleeping like 30 minutes daily uh, for a few months, and uh, collecting money. And uh, some of my uh, colleagues from my uh, flat stole all of my money what I collected. And I didn't know that because I didn't check the pocket and I landed in the Orkneys and I haven't got money for a hotel and for food and I had to and I had uh, to choose to pay for the hostel or to buy the bottle of wine and spend a nice uh, night uh, with the stars uh, all over over there and uh, the musician uh, was on next to the bench uh, next to me sorry and uh, he asked me where are you sleeping uh, I think on this bench uh, you're just sitting on my bed why? Uh, because I lost all money, uh, so I had to go back, go back tomorrow to Edinburgh. I had to go back to work. No, he says. I've got one quote, who gave me a long time ago. Paid forward. Help to free 
random people and tell them that you will help to another free people and then you will change you will transform uh, the world and this opened my mind that if you will help to some people and uh, other people who get your help will help to another one we live in a amazing and good community absolutely and uh, I'm very glad that we create such a group of people who uh, not only want to achieve our personal goals but we want to create a real impact and that we join our forces to make these things happen we use this uh, impact this energy to to raise awareness of important actions but also to infect people positively with great energy and encourage them exactly to, to make others. a pandemia of the positivity well said Exactly. of the wellness, of the nice smile, good humor, even the day is bad, just look around you, that you still can breathe and without pain in your chest. It's also about gratefulness, but uh, I truly believe that positive, uh, um, a positive example is much stronger than a negative one. Of course, uh, if you are in the darkness, you still have the light, uh, even in the darkness you've got a uh, one LED you will make the lightness uh, around you uh, so it's never too dark to have the light hmm. beautifully said so last question you are also face of the new brand uh, Royal Military inspired by aviation free of risk squadron military aviation equestrian uh, gala uniforms history of fashion so I want to ask you how did you enjoy uh, working on a movie set for Royal Military. It was an amazing experience uh, to work with the best pilot in the world. Uh, we had uh, beautiful planes and uh, behind us uh, there was a uh, big tricks in the air which are were just making the freezing blood in the body and so we had a beautiful cars uh, like we are now here and the costumes were so comfortable also we had uh, I can say yeah I can say that a uh, few rockers uh, on the motorbikes and a beautiful lady next to me uh, with the beautiful smile shining uh, all over us mm -hmm. and uh, the costumes are designed very well and uh, this is the I think the newest thing and nobody made it before uh, because uh, this is a uh, fashionable uh, suits uh, for um, normal people but inspired by the army clothes uh, which is, I think, great thing in the fashion and uh, many people we wear it. And how do you like inspiration of the Free of Free Squadron and the Battle of Britain? Uh, beautiful chapter of the Polish history, but I think the history of Europe, the whole world. The saviors of the world, exactly. Exactly. So. Um, it's, a, it's a great thing uh, to be the part uh, of this uh, great movement uh, because the Free of Free Quadru uh, Squadron is a big part of my heart from the childhood when I read the novel and I heard the stories about these uh, sky heroes and uh, the jacket it's, uh, it's very comfortable very warm when the winters uh, in North and uh, Eastern Europe are very cold you can still feel safe mm -hmm. like uh, with the uh, safeness uh, from the free or free squadron so to all our viewers stay tuned because soon you will see Kamil Lemyshevsky as a pilot <laughs> Inspiration from the Free Office Squadron, inspiration from modern aviation, but also beautiful chapter of our history. Uh, squadron Free of Free is a legend, uh, uh, but also uh, a great, great example of the heroes, uh, which are pure example for the young generations. They were young, innocent, they had passion, they had dedication, they were patriots. They saved not only Poland, but the whole Europe. That's so true. Also, there is another connection between uh, me and them. They were circus people. They were circus performers uh, from the Sky Circus. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Cirque Skalski, Circus of uh, Skalski, for those who don't know, uh, that's how they were called, uh, uh, because they were true artists. Absolutely. Uh, it's not about bravery, uh, but also about their unique um, uh, skills. Unique skills. Absolutely. And um, it's a big pleasure to uh, be the part uh, of uh, this new project. But I think you will see it, you will watch it, and uh, in between, I think you see it. 
Camille, what I should wish you? What is your dream? I can say I stopped dreaming. I'm making the plans. Uh, now I'm, I'm preparing uh, the new film, the new productions, uh, new projects and uh, also I love to help to people so I think the new project to help uh, to uh, people who need the help uh, will come and uh, you can wish me good contacts uh, with money to uh, make the dreams come true. <laughs> so, W7, mission complete, stay safe. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs>